there, and welcome to Polywog Lagoon. I have the Emoji Movie Crew here with me today, and they're going to be joining me for some story time while we read the book Coco, and we're going to open up a couple surprise eggs. Hope you're ready to get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can see more fun videos to come super soon. Okay, we can't wait to open up these surprise eggs, but first, we're going to be singing Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Hector fell off and bonked his head. Peppa Pig called Doc McStuffins, and Doc McStuffins said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. Dante fell off and bonked his head. Peppa Pig called Doc McStuffins, and Doc McStuffins said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. Mama Imelda fell off and bonked her head. Peppa Pig called Doc McStuffins, and Doc McStuffins said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. Miguel fell off and bonked his head. Peppa Pig called Doc McStuffins, and Doc McStuffins said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. One little monkey jumping on the bed. Pepita fell off and bonked her head. Peppa called Doc McStuffins, and Doc McStuffins said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Let's start on these eggs now. All right, jailbreak. Which one do you think we should open first? The blue egg or the pink egg? Hmm, let's do the pink egg first. Pink egg coming right up. What do you guys think is inside this egg? Oh my goodness, it's the My Little Ponies from the new movie. Hi Fluttershy. Hey guys, welcome to story time. And Pinkie Pie. Yay, oh Pinkie Pie, we love your sparkly hair. And it's Rainbow Dash. Hey Rainbow Dash, you're super sparkly too. All right guys, looks like we have the blue egg left. Let's get to opening. I wonder what's inside the blue egg. Oh my gosh, look, it's Princess Twilight Sparkle. Hi, Princess Twilight Sparkle. And Applejack. Oh, Applejack. Oh, Applejack, you look great. And the last one up is Rarity. Hey, Rarity, hope you're ready to read a story. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's ready to read this book. Let's hop to it. This is a little golden book. Disney and Pixar, Coco. Oh, look at that sweet little pupper there. Adapted by Adrian Molina. Illustrated by Fabiola Garza. And designed by Tony Farahan. In the small town of Santa Cecilia, there lived a boy named Miguel Rivera. His house was full of family, including his great-grandmother, Mama Coco. Oh, Mama Coco looks so sweet! Every year on Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, his family shared the memories of relatives who had passed on. Miguel's abuelita would tell the story of his great-great-grandmother, Mama Imelda whose heart had been broken by her musician husband. Because of him, there was one rule in the Rivera household, no music. But Miguel loved music. In his secret hideout, he learned to play guitar by watching videos of his favorite musician, Ernesto de la Cruz. Inspired, Miguel snuck out of the house one night with his dog Dante to perform in a local talent show. That looks like a pretty cool hideout to me. But on the way, Dante jumped onto the family ofrenda or altar. Mama Imelda's photo tumbled down with a crash. That was when Miguel made a discovery. Mama Imelda's husband was holding a guitar, and it looked very familiar. She says, Papa, why do you guys think that guitar looks familiar? Hmm. Mama Coco's papa was Ernesto de la Cruz. Miguel cried, I'm going to be a musician. 
but because of their family rule, his abuelita took his guitar and destroyed it. Smash! Miguel ran as fast as he could to Ernesto's tomb, where the musician's famous guitar still hung. Taking it off the wall, he said, Please don't be mad. I need this to be a musician like you. And he gave the legend's guitar a strum. All of a sudden, Miguel noticed all the skeletons around him. They had followed the path of marigold petals to visit their living relatives for Dia de los Muertos. To return to the land of the living, Miguel would need a blessing from one of his dead family members. So he and Dante crossed the marigold bridge into the land of the dead. <gasps> Miguel found Mama Imelda, but she said she wouldn't give him her blessing if he wanted to be a musician. Miguel had to find another way. So he teamed up with a skeleton named Hector, who said he knew Ernesto de la Cruz. With some shoe polish, Hector made Miguel look like a skeleton. They traveled all over looking for Ernesto. They even performed together in a talent show. That's what I'm talking about. But Miguel was running out of time. If he didn't get Ernesto's blessing soon, he'd turn into a real skeleton and never get home. So he ditched Hector to find his great-great-grandpa on his own. Miguel snuck into Ernesto's fiesta at the tippy top of a tall tower, but the place was so crowded he couldn't get to Ernesto. Oh, but he's got to keep trying. He's just got to. So Miguel belted out a song. Everyone watched as he sang and fell into Ernesto's pool. Splash! The skeleton saw that he was a living boy. Ernesto was overjoyed to meet Miguel. I have a great, great grandson. But then Hector appeared, and as the two men argued, Miguel learned the dark truth. His great, great grandpa had poisoned Hector and stolen his songs to become famous. Miguel was shocked to see Ernesto's face turn cold. Ernesto explained that he couldn't risk letting the world know the truth, and then he threw Miguel and Hector down, down, down into a dark pit. Oh no, I hope they can get out. I wonder if there's spiders in the dark pit. Yee! Hector told Miguel that all the songs he'd written were for his family, and there was a special lullaby. Remember me, he always sang it for his daughter, Coco. Remember me. Miguel thought of Mama Imelda's photo and the unidentified man. It's you. Hector, you are my great, great grandpa. Suddenly, Mama Imelda and Dante came to their rescue, but Hector began to disappear. His daughter was starting to forget him. Mama Imelda and Hector sent Miguel home with their blessing. Back in the land of the living, Miguel rushed to Mama Coco. He sang Remember Me to remind her of her papa. She usually didn't talk much, so Miguel was thrilled when she began to sing along. Oh, this is such a beautiful story! Mama Coco kept her papa's memory alive by sharing stories of him with her relatives. At last, the Riveras realized that music could bring them closer together. And now Miguel knew he could follow his dream and become a musician with his family's support. The end. Thank you so much for joining us today. We had such a great time opening up surprise eggs and, of course, reading the book Coco. Hope you enjoyed our video, and we'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye!